Nvidia Share, formerly known as Shadowplay, is a great way for gamers and streamers to be able to record and or stream their gameplay to popular social media platforms like YouTube and Twitch. It uses the built-in hardware NVENC encoder on your Nvidia graphics card to do all the heavy lifting, and Nvidia claims this allows for a very minimal performance hit. So being one of the popular methods of recording, and a method that I use often for this channel to showcase benchmarks, how much performance am I really losing? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some benchmarks which I conducted to see what kind of performance impacts a user would experience when using Nvidia Share or Shadowplay to record or stream their gameplay. This recording feature has been around for quite some time now, and if you've owned an NVIDIA graphics card from the last few years, chances are at some point you've used Shadowplay or Share. Here on my channel, I use it primarily for my benchmarks or gameplay showcases with specific hardware, mainly because of its simplicity. The software is built into the GeForce Experience program, which you can choose to download with the drivers. Now, as much distaste and controversies there are surrounding GeForce Experience, I actually really like the recording feature because it's super easy to use, super easy to set up, it does the job for what I needed to do, and that's really just showcasing benchmarks, and its built-in encoder is very efficient, which is what's most appealing to me. You can choose to record at common resolutions and various bit rates. You also have the ability to have the instant replay feature on, where it will be always recording in the background, but will only save footage when something interesting happens, like you're getting a kill or something, where the user can assign a hotkey bind and choose to save the last two minutes of gameplay. With the RTX 20 series, NVIDIA has vastly improved the built-in encoder to the point where it became a viable choice for the majority of streamers since its quality was comparable to CPU stream encodes at lower bit rates. Due to most platforms like Twitch or YouTube limiting their user bandwidth, that is why most stream at lower bit rates. Problem is, is that with lower bit rates, there's less data which therefore can result in lower quality. But like I said, this is something that was addressed by NVIDIA and the main advantage is that using the built-in encoder is a lot less stressful on your system than it is if you were to use your CPU to stream as then you'd have to endure a much larger performance hit. Also, if unless you're a professional streamer, I doubt most people are using a two PC setup to stream and would most likely use their GPU as it's the most easiest and cost effective option. Now I've just given you a brief description of what Nvidia Share is and some of the benefits over traditional CPU recording, but if you're interested in learning more about it, I'll leave a link in the video description so you can read about it yourself. As for testing the performance impact of using Nvidia Share, I've benchmarked 8 games using the 4K resolution at 60fps with the bitrate set to 110 megabits per second. These are generally the settings I use to record my local gameplay as it gives me the highest quality output and so that is what I decided to stick with for my testing. For our test rig, we're using a Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core processor, and it is cooled by a Corsair H115i Pro XT all in one liquid cooler. For the RAM, we've got 32GB or 4 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 memory clocked at 3600MHz with tuned CL14 timings. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify, and the graphics card is an Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090. Our operating system and games are installed on a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe drive. Powering all the components is an EVGA 1000G3 power supply. As for the operating system, we're using Windows 10 Pro with the 20H2 update, and for the NVIDIA drivers, we have the latest 461.40 package. For full system specs, you guys can check the video description down below. Alright, so now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, it's time we jumped into the benchmarks. As for the game settings, I'm using mostly high settings for all the games with the exception of one title, and even though we're recording at 4K, I'm playing at 1440p as that's the main resolution that I game at. For our first title, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here we can see that without recording, we attain an average FPS of around 194 frames per second, and 161 for the 1% lows. Then, when we begin recording, we see performance drops just slightly to 187 FPS, which is a 4% difference. Oh, and I've also thrown in the performance results when we have Instant Replay turned on to see if the performance impact would be any different with a constant replay buffer in the background, and as you guys can see, the impact here is also about the same, so a very minor performance loss which you definitely won't be noticeable, so that's excellent. Up next, we have CSGO, and this is a very popular esport title, which is really easy to run, as is evident by the performance attained here. The reason why I want to include this title is because there will be many who will want to stream an esport title such as this one,
one, and so it's crucial to see what kind of performance impacts one could experience, as the highest amount of FPS is heavily desired in a title like this. Here we're seeing the recording impacts effects to be a bit more profound, where we see a 9 FPS loss and the 1% lows have dropped by 5%. What's also interesting to see here is that with instant replay, the impact is larger, where we see a 4% drop for the average frame rate and 8% decrease for the 1% lows. Still at 575 FPS average, I doubt anyone will care too much about the performance loss, and it'll be considered a write-off as performance is still going to be buttery smooth. For our next title, we'll be taking a look at Hitman 2, and here we can see pretty much identical performance from all three configurations. These differences are extremely small, and you could practically call that a tie. So this is excellent, I'm really happy to see that as someone who can record high quality footage, they'll barely experience a performance loss. Now I won't bore you guys too much and I'll cut it short by just quickly going through all the remaining gaming benchmarks, because as you'll see that similarly to Hitman 2, the rest of the titles also exhibit the same kind of behavior. The performance losses the user will experience whether that's recording or using the instant replay feature are quite similar between the two, and when compared to performance without recording, the performance impact is thankfully very minor. So there's no need to go into too much detail with each result as you know that'll unnecessarily make the video too long. It's completely negligible so the user shouldn't have anything to worry about when using this feature when they're just locally recording or streaming to the platform of their choice. If you want to see an 8 game average, the results show exactly that. The user will not in any way be able to notice that performance loss. It won't hinder their playability, all the while being able to attain high quality footage makes this a very compelling option. Also, the biggest influence to this final result was CSGO, as we're talking about hundreds of frames there, so if we were to take out that result and just take a look at a 7 game average, then the margins are much closer. What we learned from this is that using Nvidia Share or Shadowplay is a very viable choice and the performance hit is not noticeable at all, it's very small. Though do keep in mind these results may not be reflective of the performance from other recording software such as OBS or XSplit using NVENC. So that will do it for this video, I enjoy doing these small real world benchmarking videos because there's always these scenarios that cross my mind and I always wonder what kind of performance impacts there could be. So I said hey why not go ahead and start testing stuff like this. So expect to see more videos such as this one in the near future. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.